I'd like to share with you one of the guarantees that one can prove for the EM algorithm, namely that the likelihood of the data is non-decreasing as the algorithm proceeds in its sequence of estimates. Remember that EM generates this sequence of, of thetas, theta 1, theta 2, and so on, and each of them is a parameter for the data, for the, the probability distribution. Now in EM, the setup was that th the original goal was that we wanted to get an MLE or a map estimate. So we wanted theta MLE, which was a maximizer over all thetas, of the probability of the data under that parameter. Or a map, you know, or theta map, and we'll talk soon about how to get how to modify EM to get map estimates. So the best we could hope for from EM would be to get to actually get an MLE. But it turns out, but this is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed that EM will give us a maximum of this function as a function of theta a maximizer. On the other hand, we do have the following guarantee. So we have the following proposition. The sequence theta 1, theta 2, and so on of EM estimates the sequence of of parameter vectors produced by the algorithm satisfy the following. They satisfy that they are non-decreasing. It's a non-decreasing function. Th the probability of x under theta 1 is less or equal to the probability of x under theta 2. It's less or equal to under theta 3, and so on. You get the picture. And here, this x, so I, maybe I should have mentioned that this x here is, it could be a single observation, but in general, it's going to be a sequence of n observations, of, of n sort of instances of the data. Just like in the Gaussian mixture model, how we had n draws from, you know, from, th from the mixture, something like that. So I'm wrapping all these draws all together into one, one x. So this is nice because it at least guarantees that we're not decreasing the likelihood, right? You know, the, if the likelihood function is, you know, it, you know, it's some crazy thing. And at least as we're going along, you know, we're, we're at least we're not going downhill. At least we're going uphill. But this doesn't guarantee us that you know, like I said, it doesn't guarantee us that we're going to get to a maximizer. A global maxim doesn't guarantee that we're going to get to a global maximizer, certainly. And it also, in this form, it doesn't even guarantee that we're going to get to a local maximum. It just says we're not going downhill. But it's nice. It's a nice, nice start, at least. It's a, it's a good thing to have. And so let's prove this. It's not too hard. It's a nice little proof. Well, it's not too hard once you s once you sort of see the trick for how to do it, but it's a little subtle. Okay, so the f the proof is is the following. Let's first remind ourselves what the the general and I'm going to use the general sort of setup here for EM, not the specific one that I derived for exponential families, but the general formulation. And the general formulation was that theta t plus one was an, maybe I should say, was a maximizer. It was an argmax over theta of this function q of theta with theta t, where theta t was from the previous time step. And this function q of theta, maybe I'll write it on the next line, where q theta with theta, let me just put theta naught for an you know, just some generic other theta, was the expected value using the distribution under theta naught 
of the log of the probability under theta of random variables x and z I'll put these little caps to indicate that z is random here given that x equals the actual observation the actual observed values little x so that was this function q and the, the e step was computing this and the m step was maximizing it now it's going to be useful for us to take the log of of this this likelihood function here so let's go ahead and do that let's call l of theta this is going to be a key function here l of theta let's call the log of p theta of x and it's equivalent if we can prove this this non-decreasing property for L of theta, then that's of course equivalent because log is non-decreasing. And uh, log is a monotone function. So now the first step, we're going to break this proof up into two parts. And the first part, let me call maybe part A. Part A, we're going to suppose that that this function L satisfies some along with along with q satisfies some nice properties and we're going to suppose that there exists some function some function g of theta let's call it actually because i'm going to use theta not, well I'll just call it g of theta some function g of theta make a little space here Suppose this for, for some function g, we have the following two properties. First, L of theta is an upper bound. L of theta is greater or equal to Q of theta with theta naught plus G of theta naught for any theta and theta naught. And also, second property, that L of theta this is, by the way, this is the, the log likelihood, that's what they call it, equals q of theta with theta plus g of theta for any theta. So that says and. Maybe I'll put that over here. And. Both of these hold. And now we're going to see why these two properties imply that this is non-decreasing. So the L, L's are non-decreasing. L of theta 1 is less or equal to L of theta 2 and so on. And let me draw the picture. There's actually a very, very nice little, it's very intuitively simple to understand why this is the case. So let's see what the picture is here. Let me draw, I'll, for color consistency, I'll draw this L of theta in this purple color here. So maybe this looks something like this. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. It's doing its crazy thing. That's L of theta. Let me put that over here so it's not confusing. That's that's L of theta. And down on this this axis, this is just this is just a sort of um, notional axis. Theta is not necessarily one dimensional, but but this is just notionally sort of the picture, the intuition. And now let's suppose, let's call, let's define this thing here, the right-hand side of this. Let's define this, maybe I'll write it over here, h of theta to be q of theta with theta naught, actually h sub theta naught, depends on theta naught also, plus g of theta naught. Okay, so that's that's h, and L of theta is an upper bound for h of theta for any theta naught. So let's think about when theta naught equals theta t. So we're at the generic sort of step here, and let's say that this is theta t. At the generic step, then, this is some function, and, and it, as it turns out, this is go usually going to be a nice, nice concave 
nice concave function that's easy to optimize. That's usually the case in EM, especially when you're working with an exponential family. And what does this function satisfy? Well, we know that L of theta equals H sub theta naught, H sub, sub theta rather, of theta. And so in particular, when theta equals t, we have that this function, the function h sub theta t, I'll draw it as a nice concave function like this. Let me draw it a little bit, maybe a little less nicely. Looks something like this. Something like that. Actually, I like the first one better. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So that is that is h sub theta t. And it coincides with l of theta at theta t. That's this point right here. Now, okay, we're at the generic step here in EM. We've got theta t. We have computed this, you know, we've figured out what this q of theta and theta t thing is. We did the e step. We did, that was the e step. We figured out what this was. And now the next step is the maximization step. So we need to maximize q theta and theta with theta t. So over with respect to theta. And maximizing this, well, let's look at it here. Maximizing q theta with theta t as a function of theta is the same as maximizing h sub theta of t because this is just a constant. This is just when theta naught is theta t, then g of, of theta t is, is just a constant as a function of theta. So maximizing this over theta is the same as maximizing h sub theta naught over theta. So that's, let's make it yellow so you can see it yellow. That's the maximizer. And that, by definition, the maximizer, or a maximizer, let's say there's, there's a unique one. Usually for exponential families, it's, it turns out to be unique. And the maximizer is, by definition, theta sub t plus 1. There doesn't have to be a unique one. I mean, if there's not a unique one, then it's obviously, um, you know, that you, you would have a different sort of picture. You'd have another peak, but at least you would also, you, it would be, um, you know, it would also be a maximizer. So this is just the intuition. I'm just giving you sort of the intuition here first. So we maximize that guy. And then, then uh, since L of theta is an upper bound by this property one, this is an upper bound on h sub theta of t, as I, as I drew it, I drew it sort of suggestively that to indicate that this was an upper bound. So then L of theta t plus 1 is greater or equal to h sub theta t of theta t plus 1. That was this point. So that's greater or equal to that. And that is greater or equal to this because this was the maximizer of this function. And so therefore, in going from L from from L of from L of theta t to L of theta t plus one, we increased. Okay, so that's the intuition. And I th it's 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 when you when you sort of think about the picture here, you you draw it out and, and think about what's going on at each step. I think it's it's a very nice picture to sort of keep in mind. It very makes makes it very intuitive as to why this why this works. All right, so that's that's the intuitive picture. And next, we're going to formalize this. It turns out to just be a one line sort of thing to formalize this. But then we have to show that in fact these properties hold. All right, so so we'll do that next time.